we hear, um, you know, we hear kind of a lot about, you know, technological development and um, robots taking over jobs and automation and AI and all these different things. It feels like we've been having this conversation forever and it's never, you know, it's never quite materialized. Um, you know, I'm sure at the moment there are probably three and a half million truckers in the US watching this worried that Elon Musk is going to take their job with Tesla's self-driving truck and you know, all sorts of worries about Again, well, I think history could be a guide to that as well, because every every single time in the past that people have said that machines will take jobs, they've been wrong. Um, machines don't take take jobs; they change jobs. Um, so, the end of the the nineteenth century, the century in which weaving was automated, there were more weavers than there were at the beginning. Um, and you know, companies that 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 buy more robots end up hiring more people because they grow faster than companies that don't buy more robots. Um, so, what what automation seems to do is um, is basically make people more productive, and um, you know there are loads and loads of examples of this. But, but the, only certain people, right? That's the problem. Um, no, it's actually been well. Uh, the just before the pandemic, because obviously the pandemic has changed the uh, employment figures quite a lot. Before the pandemic, employment in the OECD countries was at record highs, right? So the so if the robots are taking the jobs, I don't know who's they're taking because um, you know basically we've been as close to full employment as we've ever been in many of those countries. Um, so I just I I don't know where the um, the people whose jobs are being taken away by this current lot of technology. It's always the next technology that people are worried about. So the self driving lorries. Oh, well, that's the technology that's going to take away all the all the jobs. But is that is that true? I mean, if um, um, being a, lo a lorry driver is not a very nice job because you're away from your family for several days at a time. If you could automate the long distance parts of it on the highways, which is probably where you automate uh, lorry driving first because it's a much simpler environment, then you actually make a much more pleasant job of moving the stuff from the end of the highway to the depot. Also, you may have noticed there's been an explosion of employment in delivery drivers, last mile delivery drivers. Um, so I think the the unpleasant job of being away from your family for three or four days and living in a truck may, may go away, but I think we're going to have an awful lot more local delivery drivers. We're also going to have jobs created to maintain you know, delivery robots, to, 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 there are already the people building self-driving cars. They have these control centers where a single uh, safety supervisor is, is looking after 12 vehicles at once. And one of them gets to a roadblock and there's a, you know, there's a road work or something like that. And they have to say, they have to draw with a pen, you know, this is the path you should take around it. So the, the, uh, this is what technology has always done. It has changed the job to a different kind of job. Um, and so, you know, you, we may move from drivers to supervisors of drivers, or we may move from lorry drivers to, um, you know, to local drivers or, or something like that. Um, but no, I think the, the, the lesson of history is that the idea that the robots are really going to take all the jobs away um, has just always been wrong. So I don't see any reason for it not to be wrong again. But I mean, like, I, I understand that argument and you look to, to history and that's what it says, but well, so, so a lot of people have argued recently that um, a lot of the technological developments that we've seen in the past aren't really going to be repeated. Um, so you have, you know, Robert Gordon, the economist. Yeah, no, so the Robert Green, Gordon, the, all the good things have been invented. Again, I just, I completely disagree with that. Um, I think the problem is that, um, and people thought this, so the Luddites thought this in the 1820s. They thought, oh God, um, machines are going to take our jobs as weavers. And you know what are we going to do? This what historically we look back at that period and we go, this is just before the steam engine is invented, invented, and there's an explosion in railways. This is just before the telegraph is invented, and there's an explosion in telecommunications. This is just before electrification begins, and that has an enormous impact on industry. So there were three technological revolutions around the corner that they they of course couldn't have known about, um, and and we have some inkling of the technological revolutions that could happen this century. We're seeing the beginnings of one in in, in clean tech for example but you know we haven't even started on um on synthetic biology uh we we're, we're still absolutely kind of kindergarten when it comes to, and now the moderna vaccine and the pfizer vaccine are kind of the beginnings of how you could use our understanding of biology as a as a branch of engineering um but we have any you know by the end of this century people will have things like you know buildings that grow themselves um or uh, car parts or uh, machinery parts that grow back when they wear um, this is stuff that's in science fiction, by the way, but um, but it's entirely plausible by just extrapolating from existing synthetic biology. So, of course, you know, we look back at all the things that have been invented and go, well, we can't think of anything that 
um, needs to be invented or can be invented. So we must be at the end of the history of technology, but um, I'm sure there's much more to come. And there... space, we're just getting going with space as well. We're right at the beginning of so many enormous changes. <laughs> and the and this end of this century, we'll just look back and go, well, there you go, roaring 20s. <laughs> the start of it all. But I guess yeah. my point is, do you think that there is a link between the, the gravity of the technological innovation? Like, I think that, you know, I agree that Robert Gordon is wrong and the okay, you could say for the past ten years with social media or with phones, it's 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 been a bit, you know, it's been a bit of a, a whimper rather than a big shout, um, and they haven't really had the big effect that they were going well, to. Well, they haven't they haven't had any impact on. I, I suppose the problem is that where economists like to look for the impact of technology is in productivity, and the technologies that we've been most excited by in the past ten years, which have been smartphones and and social media, have actually had a negative effect on on productivity if anything they're very efficient ways to waste time um which is great and that's really you know they're entertaining and you can play a game while waiting for a bus for for two minutes which you couldn't do in the 1980s because playing a game meant plugging something into your tv and you know being sitting on the floor um so but i mean I, i'm not surprised that um those technologies have not shown up in uh, in productivity figures because i don't think they i don't think they actually make much of an impact but i think big industrial technologies like um synthetic biology or, or or you know space technologies i think could really make a massive difference to economic productivity so um so i don't i don't think the game is over at all and i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in the next 50 years which i intend to stick around for as much of as i possibly can <laughs> thank you very much are there yeah i think i think i i have pretty much an information overload right now. <laughs> i mean it's nice to have such an optimistic interview right yeah. it feels like yeah, maybe some people think you're too too optimistic about the power of technology and you know be more concerned. But it's it's always nice to hear. But I think this is I like voice. to think that mine is is a a pragmatic um, position, but it's also informed by history, which is we know that in the past people have been gloomy about technology. We also know in the past they've been too optimistic about technology. And I think if you have that kind of historical um, reference point, then you can sort of try and get yourself somewhere in the middle where you yeah. say it's probably not as bad as people say. Um, but it's probably also, you know, immortality and we all upload ourselves into the, you know, that's probably all nonsense as well. But somewhere in the middle, there is a sensible position to take. And the other thing is that, you know, the fact is for the past certainly 500 years, technology has made people's lives better. Um, and I don't see any reason for that um, progress with a capital P not to continue. Thank you very much for your time today. I really Thank enjoyed you. it. I think James did too. Yeah, unfortunately, that's all we, all we have time for. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, really enjoyed it. Nice to get a forward-looking forward forward voice, but also backward-looking. It's a really nice mix. Um, and thank you for such insightful. smart questions as well and, and, uh, and a variety of, of, of subjects. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks very much, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.